Hello and welcome to week one, the official first lecture of animal music. This one is titled, A Brief History of Life on Earth. I guess it's brief depending on how you think of it, but let's just see how that goes. This little fishy looking guy here is actually a fish. His name is, well, I don't know what his name is, but he, he is a midshipman fish. Uh, he's one that we'll be talking about. He makes makes a cool sound. It sounds like this. And he makes a couple other sounds too, like and <laughs> three three types of sound. Anyway, these these little uh, speckles along his his outer body are are early hearing organs in a sense. They pick up pressure vibrations. And. What else? Yeah, he's he looks like he must a fish out of water there, but he actually he does just fine um, on the land. I can't remember exactly why, as long as he's he's moist. Okay, so evolution of life on Earth. We're gonna look at geological time and life on Earth first, and then uh, we'll talk about vertebrates from the Cambrian period to the present. You don't have to know these terms, but it's just to help you situate um, the whole thing generally. And then a little question, exploration of what kind of animal you are, um, uh, thinking about evolutionary history from the human perspective. So here's a picture, an image of what geological time is like. So all the way, in the, we're at the present right here in the Holocene. And if you go down this like spiral staircase, this is where we came from. And if you go back, it looks like you have to go back. Oh, I can't even see that. But it should be 4.6 billion years ago. Now, that sounds like a long time ago. That's how old the Earth is. Um, you might be wondering, is that old or young? <laughs> so how old is the universe itself? The universe itself is believed to be 13.7 billion years old. So um, I don't know if that's an old number, that's a big number, or a small number, but that's at least the number that we can judge everything based on. So so the universe is 13.7 billion years old. The Earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago. So the universe was around for, I don't know, 8 billion years or so before the Earth formed. I don't know if I did the math right, but, and our whole solar system formed at that time, including our sun, so it's formed like a big disk around it. Anyway, the Earth is forming 4.6 billion years ago. And then, uh, you know, it spirals <laughs> around. Time Time goes on for a little while. I can't even see what that says, but we'll see more in the next page. And then after, I think, like, the, you get the first, like, lifelike things around here. Two billion years uh, in, you get a thing like that. Then a billion years. Then up here we have the Precambrian. We're going to be talking about this little Cambrian period, but this is just because when you get the first vertebrates, and most of the animals we'll be talking about in the class are vertebrates, but not all. And then as you move through time, you get the Devonian, Devonian period, when a lot of the fish um, that, that are around today uh, originated. And then you keep going around here. Ooh, you have your dinosaur periods. Like there's three dinosaur periods, the Jurassic, uh, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. And then 65 million years ago, a big meteor hits and the dinosaurs disappear and the mammals are like, woohoo, party time. And then um, you get a lot of mammals and then you get us like toward the very, very end here. But this is just one way of um, conceptualizing time on Earth, and, and particularly the time of life on Earth, how life evolved. Oh, there it is, much bigger. Um, yeah, now we can see this. Three million years ago, earliest organic structures, so the earliest lifelike things. So this is another way of looking at the same thing. Um, now what's going to happen here is if we look at this top timeline, this is from all the way to the beginning of the Earth, all the way over here, to the present um, and and these things just zoom in so the the Phanerozoic here becomes this whole thing and then you can zoom in on the Cenozoic which the Cenozoic is here goes here this whole thing is a zoom in on the Cenozoic and then if you take the Cenozoic and you look at just the quaternary period which is here um, this whole thing is the quaternary and then so the Holocene is what we're in right now so it's we're very, 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 very much at the end. Like we're so far at the end that you can't even 
see it. But anyway, let's look at this top one. There's the super eon of the Precambrian. So I guess everything after that must be the Cambrian. Uh, and then you have these eons. I don't know the names of those things. So uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. The eras and the periods. Um, uh, so if we take just one example of um, looking at this timeline, we're going to go, oh, uh, we got some facts on this page, but we'll, we'll come back to this page in a moment. So the Earth is 4.54 billion years old. I said 4.6 on the previous page. Um, this chart shows that there's two super eons, right? The Precambrian and presumably the Cambrian, dividing... Uh, that divides altogether into four eons. So the Precambrian has three of the eons. Um, and each of those eons divide into multiple eras, and the eras divide into periods, and the periods presumably, yes, divide into epochs. As you can see down here, period divides into epochs. Epochs divide into ages. Uh, okay. And that, so to read this, we're currently in the Phenerozoic eon, which is this whole thing. Uh, the Cenozoic Era, which is here, and then it's expanded here. The Quaternary Period, which is here, uh, and that's expanded here. And within the Quaternary, we're all the way at the end here, the Holocene. Okay, another way of conceptualizing this whole thing is to think about it kind of like a clock. So we're starting here at the beginning, 4.6 um, billion years ago when the Earth forms, and it takes uh, quite some time before you get uh, this purple line and the purple line ends up being prokaryotes. So some sort of like lifelike things. Let's, let's take a look. So the earth formed 4.6 billion years ago and existed for 600 million years from there to there before any life is extant on the earth. And then the early life was prokaryot prokaryotic. That just means it doesn't, I think it, uh, those, uh, yeah, they don't, have, those cells don't have nuclei, but it's not super important for us. Um, and they didn't, and there wasn't any photosynthesis. So the, so the thing that we associate with plants today, they weren't, there wasn't that yet um, for about a billion years from there until when you get this blue line. Then after about a billion years of that, um, oh, then you, you get photosynthesis around here. So prokaryotes without photosynthesis, then you get some photosynthesis. Then around here, you start to get eukaryotes, so they have actual nuclei in the cells. Um, and then it, that they're still single cells. Then around the blue thing here, you get multicellular life, so multiple cells cooperating together to be a single organism. Um, and that but it still takes 500 million years after the origin of eukaryotes. Uh, and the first animals, you go another 700 million years, and then you get the first animals. So you get multicellular life, but they're... Um, actually, those are probably sponges and stenophores and stuff like that. But then you get animals. And animals include all the invertebrates and the vertebrates. Among the invertebrates, you have all the shellfish and stuff that you eat, mollusks. Uh, you have insects and stuff like that. So worms. Um, so then this green line starts there. And then uh, the first vertebrates, the animals with a backbone, that's what vertebrate means, uh, is this, oh, it's not the yellow line. It is, oh, we don't have it on here. Um, it, anyway, it's, oh, first vertebrate land animals are, oh, but those are land animals. So yeah, this 530, 530 million years ago, um, this pointer here is when you get the first vertebrates. Uh, and then the first land animals, those are tetrapods. Those are fish that kind of like walked up on land and became amphibians. Then, uh, you know, you get some reptiles in there too. You get your birds, you get your dinosaurs, you get mammals. Um, Non-bird dinosaurs were in here. Mammals existed before them and then they're existing during them and mammals still exist after the dinosaurs were extinct. I don't know what the birds are in this, but that's okay. Birds, birds are descendants of, of dinosaurs. And uh, so then, you know, you can see mammals have been along, around as long as this brown line. I mean, before that, it's not like mammals weren't around. It's just that mammals were not distinguishable from the reptiles that they came from. But okay, so they were mammal-like things. And then, um, uh, you know, around in this tiny little place, the, you get like primate-like 
mammals, primate like mammals around here, and then mammals that look like humans. I think that's what the name hominins is, and like the great apes and stuff like that. And then we diverged from chimpanzees about seven million years ago, so that's too small to see on this clock. But this, oops, sorry. So this gives you a, a perspective on. I don't know how much time it takes for life to evolve and how animals are related to one another and how animals that evolve later are still related to the ones that they came from in the past. That's, I guess, one of the main ideas in this. That mammals didn't spring up from nowhere. They came from reptiles. Reptiles didn't spring up from nowhere. They came up from amphibians. Amphibians didn't spring up from nowhere. They came from fish. And we still have fish around today. Um, so in this class, we'll be looking at humans as animals and when we look at fish as animals that make vocalizations we're, we're probably learning a little something about humans too okay now if we look specifically at the cambrian period um the the you don't have to know this term but this is just like one little point on all of those charts that we were just looking at this is an important point because as you can see this is the evolution of vertebrates so in the cambrian period is when you see the first vertebrates so 500 let's see here is 541 uh, million years ago so you know before that this there was still an organism here it just didn't have a backbone so it wasn't called a vertebrate yet but uh these vertebrates had backbones but they didn't have jaws then i don't know what the black hoderms are, are i think they got like shells on their outside of their body but then around here you get sharks sharks sort of come off of the line that was that became the jawless fish uh spiny sharks you get today the biggest group of fish is the ray fin fishes so when you think of most fish you're thinking of this group and they are still related to the jawless fish but they have bones and jaws and then the lobe fin fish are actually a very small group today it's like less than one percent of fish but um i guess they were a little bigger back then it's some of these the lobe fin fish that their lobe, the lobes on their fins became arms and legs and, and allowed the amphibians to kind of like walk up on land. And then amphibians became reptiles, not all of them. Some of them are still amphibians, but, and some of the reptiles became birds. Some of the reptiles became mammals. Okay. So this is how we look at this, but let's just go back and see this Cambrian period on some of the previous charts. So looking at this chart, um, Cambrian, it doesn't just jump out. So I may Okay, so it's not even labeled there, but how do I know? It's because this whole thing is this line, so the Cambrian is there, the Cambrian period. And um, it's also going to be there, and we're going to zoom in on that on the next page. The Cambrian is, is that part there. So everything before that happens to be that super eon, the pre-Cambrian, and everything after this um, is in the Cambrian eon. I mean, that's not a term we use all that much, but... Uh, the idea is that this is the beginning of vertebrate evolution with fish. And then well, we could guess about when amphibians and, and reptiles and mammals are there. Okay. Here's a nice illustration. So there are bony fish. There are amphibians and reptiles, then mammal-like things, then primate-like things, and then <laughs> uh, naked men. Um, so there's one thing that I should point out about this. I'll let you watch it again. Um, this is just one of the many, many, many paths that was taken in evolution. So it, it looks, if you look from the beginning of time, the way this one is, the way this is doing, and show this sequence, this only tells you how the what the path of evolution was from a long time ago to specifically to humans. Like that same path um, went also to modern day chimpanzees, went also to modern day birds, but like through a different set of steps toward the end. So there isn't anything special about this progression. But if you do look, if you were to run this backward, that's the thing I'm going to have you do on the next screen, or we're going to do it together. Like this. Um, this does make sense from a human perspective. So I know that didn't completely make sense. Let me try and say it one more time. 
um, humans have been like if uh, humans have been on the planet. Our ancestors have been on the planet for exactly the same amount of time as every other animal that's alive today. Their ancestors have been on the planet. Um, if you look at a, 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 you know, some bird species today, or like the midshipman fish that we looked at before, um, in some ways the midshipman fish is representative of, of what we were a long time ago. And that is what I'm going to present to you here. But it's really important to note that like the, you can't just make that assumption. There are some fish that are representative of what our ancestors were like a long time ago. But for the most case, for animals, they all animals have been evolving for a long time. So that 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 picture that we would that we saw on the previous screen, where it's morphing from one to the other, there's a different one of those in a sense for every animal that's alive, and they all start out the same, but then they end up different. Okay, so when you think about what kind of an animal a human being is, so you might start with you, and then. Uh, you know, if you go back a generation to your parents, there were, you know, two parents that gave birth to you and four grandparents. And you can keep going back. You got great grandparents, great, great grandparents, etc. right? Keep going back generations. If you keep doing that for a long time, let's say you keep doing that for 2,000 years, you get to the generation of, uh, I mean, the 2,000, 3,000 years, Muhammad, Jesus, Aristotle, Plato, Moses, right? Those people. You had ancestors at that time. I know that it's like obvious in some ways, and in some ways it's still kind of a revelation. And it's not really that many generations. I counted it, counted it recently, and maybe it's only like 80 generations. Um, but yeah, and you keep going backward. And if you go back 150,000 uh, years, I mean, so that's, you know, quite a lot more time than than this but that's where you get to mitochondrial eve and mitochondrial eve has this name the name of eve from the adam and eve story mitochondrial eve is the the um it is the most recess recent ancestor of everybody that is alive today so every every human that is alive today is related to one another you just have to go back a certain set of steps in time and the name of that person who is this ancestor of everybody who happens to be alive today is has called mitochondrial eve and it's because you can look at the her you can look at mitochondria and see um evolutionary relationships uh, you know in a special way so uh and they know that she was about 150 thousand years ago so everybody on the planet is like very closely related to, all people on the planet are very closely related to one another so everything beyond this is like this is where the way in which humans are not uh, yeah the way in which humans are different from one another is all up from here to the present everything else is is all like all humans okay so you go back some more time before mitochondrial eve you go back 500,000 years and there's homo heidelbergensis and why do i say that that's not super important but Homo heidelbergensis gave rise to Homo sapiens, which is us, but then also Neanderthals and uh, the Denisovans and a bunch of different um, uh, human species or subspecies. And then there's like interbreeding between all those groups. But there was like a divergence point about 500,000 years ago. Um, Homo ergaster is 1.5 million years ago. I think that Homo ergaster is very interesting because I think because they invented fire and started cooking food. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they invented fire, but they figured out how to use it, and they were cooking food, and that makes a big difference. But I think they were also doing a lot of long-distance running and possibly a lot of dancing and percussion music, and, that, and that's an interesting factoid. Australopithecus um, um, was two to three million years ago. It's just sort of like a more uh, ape-like ancestor of humans. Um, so, you know, you find, yes, when you find uh, skeletal remains of our ancestors about two to three million years ago, they look more like Australopithecus. And if you find them about 1.5 million years ago, they look like Homo ergaster. If you go back about six million years, five or six million years, you, you don't find that our own ancestors, right? We're doing like your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, etc. So these are, this is our line. 
And you don't find that our ancestors were chimpanzees, but what you do find is our shared ancestor with chimpanzees. So it's a, it could be something that looks like halfway like a human and halfway like a chimpanzee. Um, it could look a lot like a chimpanzee. It could look a lot like a human. I mean, the, when they when it's drawn, it's usually drawn kind of halfway between humans and chimpanzees. But it, uh, you can think of chimpanzees as being fairly good representatives of what our ancestors would have been like five to six million years ago. And then if you just went back a, a couple more million years, that's where with our, our shared ancestor with gorillas. Gorillas may have gotten a lot bigger than our shared ancestor. So maybe I'm, I don't think that our ancestor at this point would have looked very much like a gorilla. My guess is it would have looked more like a, a chimp, but I don't know that to be true. Orangutans, we're related to them 12 million years ago. The same thing, I doubt that we were specifically looking like them. But basically all the great apes around this time um, are all, they're all just one species at this time. And you keep going back, these are our ancestors, our grandparents, our great, 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 great grandparents. This is when we were we shared um, a common ancestor with gibbons. We had a common ancestor with all monkeys around 40 million years ago. Common ancestor with all primates, uh, 65 to 80 million years ago. Um, you go back even further, like where do primates come from? Because primates are really different. They have very big eyes and they're visual and they live up in trees. And that's really different from other uh, mammals, little small mammals, which lived on the ground and were more rodent-like. Um, so, but our ancestor with all the other mammals was around 100 million years ago. Um, and then with just all mammals entirely, and I think that, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that also includes like platypuses, right? Which are more distantly related. They still lay eggs and they have bills, um, right? Like the duck-billed platypus and, and a little pouch where they keep their, <laughs> keep their babies. Um, okay, going back even farther, 340 million years ago, um, amniotes. Amniotes is like, you know, like the term amniotic fluid. These are, are animals that figured out how to lay eggs on land, I believe. So it's it's all the egg-laying tetrapods. It's basically all the tetrapods, which are, just means four legs. So reptiles, birds, mammals, all those guys, but not the amphibians. And then all tetrapods, so that includes amphibians of 395 million years ago. Then you got lobefin fish. I don't have a date for that, um, but I, I should. It's, it's like around... I don't know, 400 million years ago. Anyway, bony fish before that, uh, the jawed fish. We were looking at this before on the, the vertebrate diagram. Then uh, all vertebrates that don't have jaws, so like the lampreys and the hagfish still exist today, and they were our, and they are apparently very good representatives of what we were like. But our great, 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 et cetera, grandparents were like 505 million years ago. Looked a lot like today's lampreys and hagfish. Before that is Amphioxus, and that's kind of crazy just because amph the lamprey looks like a fish. The Amphioxus looks like a worm, um, and that's not that much longer. So we came from a worm-like thing. Before that were worms and, and other bilateria, which just means bilaterally symmetrical organisms. And then all animals, so that's going to include all the arthropods, the, the insects, um, and all the sea creatures corals, everything that's alive, or sorry, all animals. And I think, I guess animals don't include fungi because you go back a little farther and you get our relationship with fungi. And then slime molds, I have to say, I don't even know what a slime mold is, but to 2,100 million years ago, that's otherwise known as 2.1 billion years ago. So to remember the age of the earth is 4.6 billion years old. And this is taking our ancestry back to about 2.1, so about half the duration of how long the Earth was around. And there, so there was still some life before that, but I just didn't have, on the chart that I was looking at, I didn't have anything about what, what kind of life that was. So, but this is our family tree, right? So I just pushed everything to the right. And um, this is now the structure of the course. So week one is this video right now. We're looking at life on Earth, generally. And I don't even need to say this, but there's more to say about life on Earth. But this is just to give you, to start you thinking um, in a way that's going to help you make a general map of, of the animals over the time course of 
life of evolution. Okay, in week two, we're going to look specifically at hearing and vocalizing. Like, what is it to hear and how did animals evolve hearing? Hearing, do all the animals on this page here, do slime molds here? If not, do fungi, do worms, right? That's, that's a pretty good question. Do worms vocalize? Do worms make noises other than, you know, from slithering around? So the, we'll, we'll be able to look at those questions like why animals would hear at all and then whether they started communicating first and then hearing later or vice versa. Okay, Week three, insects. And we're not closely related to insects at all. Insects would be down here, I think, with the all animals category. So, um, but we're going to start there because insects evolve hearing independently from us and they evolved at seven different times in their line and they have ears sometimes on like their legs and their wings they're not necessarily on their head um so insects do things a lot differently but then at the same time there's a lot of ways in which they're really similar so the, that ends up being a very interesting case study oops um then we get to fish and we'll focus on the midshipmen who you saw at the beginning of this presentation week five we'll do frogs um Week six through eight, we'll do birds. There's a lot of amazing stuff, things to talk about with birds, so we'll, we'll spend some time with them. Then we'll have a break. Um, and then week 10, we get small mammals. So ra mice, rats, bats. Um, then the next two weeks, we'll talk about, I think it'll be predominantly whales. We'll read some stuff about sea lions that can keep a beat. And we might throw some dolphin stuff in there. I mean, dolphins are a type of whale, but we tend to think of them as, as different. So we'll have to see in there. But I know I have tons of amazing whale stuff, and that's one of the... I'm, I'm very excited for those weeks, weeks 11 and 12. 13 and 14, we'll be talking about specifically about monkeys and apes. Can This is more stuff. Can monkeys keep a beat? If so, why and why not? Um, uh, what kinds of vocalizations do monkeys and apes use and, and what way are they related to the vocalizations we use and then the last um two weeks we'll look at humans as animals as it were um and think about humans in the context of what we've learned about all these other animals and how they use sound and respond to it and how they structure songs and then what, how human songs are structured and how we use them and that is the end of the slideshow uh, for this week. I um, hope you enjoy the readings and the videos. And um, yeah, please drop into an office hour sometime. Say hi. You don't have to have anything, you know, important to say. Just 